Hi, I'm Hannah, and I'm in the BA Test Kitchen to have a super secret conversation about Chris Morocco. Once again, we're putting Chris's super taster abilities to the test. This is Christina Cho's Hong Kong style French toast. I'm challenging Chris to recreate this dish with all of the ingredients in just one day. He'll be able to taste it, touch it, and smell it, but at no point will he be able to see this dish. At the end of the day, we'll come back to see his final creation, and I'll be the judge. Oh, it's giving me something. It was there and then it was gone. Kind of eggy, waffly something. Oh. Got this very clearly defined square shape with this sort of slight crisp edge that is kind of giving me a little bit of like a pancake vibe. It sort of feels like two forms of sweetness. There's sort of like a stickiness that's kind of giving me a little bit of a syrupy vibe. But then also there's this sensation of maybe a little bit of powdered sugar. It's so maybe a pool of what I'm assuming is butter, maple butter, honey butter. So I've got these two square pancake-ish somethings. I'm getting a little bit of peanut. Mallory, you told them I fucking hate peanut butter, didn't you? God, I hate that flavor. It is like the flavor equivalent of a fart in a car. I was so excited to see what was inside this. Now, excitement gone. Now, in terms of how you construct this to get the peanut in the middle, seemingly, of the pancake, that's a very interesting question. Yeah, it's quite a generous coating and quite an even coating of peanut butter. It's pretty smooth and creamy. I'm not finding pieces of peanut in here. It's all pretty broken down. Is there a fruit element here that I'm missing? Or is this just a peanut butter pancake? I think I'm good here. There we go. So, ingredients. All right, so pancakes. AP flour, baking powder. I mean, half of this is just figuring out how to make a pancake. Baking soda, salt, granulated sugar. For liquids, let's assume buttermilk, eggs, butter, maple syrup, 10x sugar, confectioner sugar. Let's go for Smucker's creamy, natural peanut butter. I think that's it. I need a special piece of equipment here. I need the mold or the cutter that is gonna allow me to create that very crispy edged square pancake. So I don't know like what what words I need to use for you to give me the thing I need. Somebody's gonna shop for these ingredients and then I will have my first shot at the dish. All right, so this is gonna be my first attempt at the dish and I have my ingredients here and as ever, it doesn't look like nearly enough. First and foremost, my question is what's up on that mold, Mallory? That's all you're giving me? Those are the square molds I have. You made me do this. This is your choice. I don't know how you're making friggin' square pancakes without a square. There you go. If you don't use something like that to mold those pancakes, what are you doing? I literally don't know what this means. Is it really obvious and I'm just being a dingbat? Uh, God. It feels like the peanut butter is sandwiched in a distinct layer between two kind of halves of batter, if that makes sense, right? If you take the mold away and all you have is a skillet or a pan of some sort, you're introducing batter potentially in a free-form way, the logical conclusion is you're gonna end up with a circle, right? Is it something that you have to bake and then cut pieces out of? How do you do that, though? If I were to put it in a, a, like a baking dish of sorts, right? I'm not gonna be able to get that pancake out. Just had like the, 
the surface, the perception of the edge of the pancake. The parchment paper or some other way of creating a sort of non-stick surface. We are barking up the wrong tree in terms of square mold in a skillet. You're saying you do not have any kind of special tools to make this. <laughs> Is there a world in which that's some kind of like laminated French toast kind of thing? but I was just missing the crust of the bread. But if it's that, I don't have the right ingredients. I'd probably ask for regular milk or cream. I would ask for sliced white bread. Maybe I would ask for even like a little bit of vanilla. So, got a fresh direction. So we're gonna make French toast. Are the crusts cut off to kind of like square them off still further? Maybe I'll leave the crusts on for my first pass and then we'll take a close look at that for the next tasting. All right, so, huh, I meant to put that in the bowl. It's fine, we're gonna assemble it in the, uh, the pan. All right, for two eggs, let's call it half a cup of cream. Then adding some granulated sugar. I'm also gonna put salt. I don't think I got cinnamon from the original dish, but I, I might put a, just a tiny touch of vanilla. Thin that cream out, thin that custard out just slightly. Might do a half cup of milk. Everybody here likes peanut butter? I love peanut butter. <laughs> so I'm doing this two ways. One is a package that has the peanut butter in it from the beginning, sandwiched between those two pieces of bread. The other one is just individual pieces of French toast, and I will just assemble the package as it goes into the skillet. Could have used a little bit of a bigger boat here, but that's fine. All right, so French toast is in the pan. I've got some butter in there. Now I need to put the peanut butter on the French toast that's in the skillet, which is not super ideal. It's becoming apparent. The bread wants to tear a little bit, so it's just something to probably reconsider for next time, probably go all in on assembling the French toast completely before it goes into the custard, right? I want color, but I don't wanna push the color too far too fast, because ultimately, this is a pretty sizable kind of nugget of French toast here, right? So I wanna cook the custard through before I flip it. I don't wanna have to flip it multiple times. Oh yeah, we're a little dark here. Wow, we're just like falling apart all kinds of ways today. Obviously a little bit more color than I want, but part of it could just be that I put too much sugar in the egg mixture, right? Because sugar wants to take on color, it wants to brown, but taking it too far, you know, you get like this. Wow, that is ugly. So this French toast is the one that I laid the uh, peanut butter in pre-soak. This one was post-soak. Obviously seeing a major difference between the two, the one that I didn't pre-assemble just sat for too long in the custard. That bread is very tender and it just kind of wanted to fall apart on me. So we're gonna cheat this, right? Gasp. One of the mistakes I've made here is I should have trimmed the crusts before I proceeded with the recipe and just started out with something kind of closer to this. I just want to kind of get like a little bit of like butter meltage. So I've got some maple syrup. I recall kind of getting the sensation of a little bit of powdered sugar on there. I feel like for like a little visual finish. So here's my first attempt at peanut butter French toast. It's not bad. I still think like there might be like a larger story here in terms of like, you know, some other potential ingredients. But from a technique perspective, like I think I feel pretty, pretty good now having worked through it a little bit. All right, so time to give myself some scores. First up, ingredients, 80%. Could the syrup be a fruit syrup to work off of the peanut butter? That's like, I think the main thing that I'm really stuck on. Technique, I'll give myself an 85. Appearance, 70%. Maybe my edges look a little bit weird. Maybe the 10X is incorrect. Taste-wise, maybe I would give myself a 75. All right, here are my actual scores. Okay. So ingredients, I've got actual 79, technique 80, appearance 81, taste 84, 
for a total of 81. For the second tasting, I'm thinking really clearly about the size of the French toast. I'm thinking about toppings. Some things to think about and just a lot riding on that second tasting. All right, so we're looking at size, palm length, palm width. So I'm not detecting any 10X on the plate. I've got melted butter, and then I've got our syrup. It's really funny, you know, it's like, it's maybe got a maple aspect to it, but it's got something else going on in there. The flavor feels very muted to me. If anything, it just tastes like you took a little jam, you took a little maple syrup, boom, 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 mix them together. Maybe the play here is we just need to take some sort of jelly or what have you, put it in with the syrup, kind of melt it down and see how it tastes. My custard is probably too sweet, I will say that. Like this feels like a little bit more of a neutral custard. I'm, I'm gonna pull back the sugar, but that's just kind of a detail. So, huh, I think we can maybe safely cross out pancakes. Oh yeah, raspberry jam with the seeds. That's all you've got? Unopened blueberry? Which is, which is also moldy, you know what I mean? It's like, you know what? Maybe Sounds you good. keep that. My best guess so that was a little syrup, a little grape jelly, boom, bada boom. So now it's not peanut butter French toast. Now it's like PB&J French toast. And how much cuter is that? And if you're telling me that's not the world we're living in, I don't know where we are. So what, we take 10X, the confectioner's sugar, out, and that's gonna be some game changer. Custard, gonna make slightly less sweet. I still wasn't getting any cinnamon from it, I will say. If it's in the custard, it's, it feels like a pretty inconsequential amount, so I'm gonna leave it out. Vanilla, I feel a little better about, but yeah, just a little less sweet, I think, mainly. We've got a plan, and let's make it happen. Here we go, last attempt. This one's for the judge. All right, so I got eggs, I've got cream, I've got half a cup of milk, I've got vanilla, salt, little granulated sugar, the consistency kind of returns to that of like, maybe about heavy cream, just slightly looser. Pre-trimming the bread. Peanut butter before. I really like the way the peanut butter fused those two pieces of bread together. And I love the way it then soaked. It's just a little bit cleaner of a workflow. Sandwiching them together. So now we're soaking. This type of bread, it's very easy to over soak because it'll just fall apart on you. I'm going a little lower and slower with regards to cook time. Just a little bit easier gauge on doneness. Still a touch more color than I'd like, but I think it's okay. I don't know, it just kind of wants to get dark, you know? We're just about there. Yeah. Back from the stove. Color's good. Not bad. Little maple syrup going on there. And I mean, I don't know. I guess that's just like where we're leaving it. I don't feel overwhelmingly confident, but I mean, relative to where we started off today, just to draw your attention back to the cookie cutter that I destroyed in an effort to prove some kind of point that has now been completely lost. Yeah, I think we've, we've come a long way, but I don't know that we're like there. I don't know that we stuck the landing on this one. Previous actual score for ingredients was 79. Let's call this 82. Technique was 80. It's hard to know what exactly I was being penalized for. I'm gonna stay at 80. Appearance, I was at an 81. Maybe we're at an 85. Maybe the 10X was working against me there. Taste 84, we'll taste this shortly. I still feel like, yeah, like 85, something right around in there. Hannah's gonna come in and clarify some things for me. Hannah's a tough critic, but we'll see what she has to say. Hey, Chris. You look a little defeated. <laughs> May I present to you, Christina Cho's Hong Kong style French toast. <sighs> the muted syrupy thing. 
I don't think I would have gotten sweetened condensed milk in a thousand years. You beat me to the punch. That's why like seeing food is helpful sometimes. <laughs> so what bread did you use? I used sliced white bread. Standard sliced Standard white bread. Standard sliced white bread. Would you be able to take a guess now that you know that this is Hong Kong style French toast, what kind of bread this would be? Milk bread. Yes. Stale, day or okay. two old milk bread. What it presented as was a pancake. Okay. Square pancake, obviously. What's inside? I have just peanut butter. Okay. I'll give you peanut butter, but what kind of peanut butter did you use? The kind that tastes like and is made from peanut. Natural. Like every Stir. other one. Yeah. No, stop it. I peanut butter is amazing. You did two thin slices pressed together, press removed. This is actually a book ended. Oh. piece of thick milk bread. And you're slicing it just until the end without going all the way through. Okay. What is the custard? Egg, milk, heavy cream, sugar, salt, touch of vanilla. This is far simpler. Egg, milk, touch of salt, dash of cinnamon. I did not get cinnamon. I was looking for it. It, it looks good though. Did you use just a standard pan? Little butter, regular skillet. Okay, no lid. No lid. You need a lid? You need a lid. To achieve that wow. custardy middle. Interesting. You're relying on steam to help you yeah. cross the finish line. Okay. So ingredients, you gave yourself an 82 and I gave you an 81. There are some key differences in the type of milk bread and obviously the telltale condensed milk drizzle versus the maple syrup. <laughs> Technique, you gave yourself an 80. I'll give you an 85. You're cooking it in a pan. You're not using a lid. I didn't use a lid. Yeah, yeah fair. You're using two slices of bread. It's actually one to slice. Butterfly. Butterfly, yes. But you got the peanut butter in, you soaked the bread in the custard. Like these are pretty solid right. points that you did address. So I'll be generous there. Mm -hmm. Appearance, you gave yourself an 85. I'll give you a 92 because other than the dark amber maple syrup versus the condensed milk, it looks very much alike. Okay, so for taste, you gave yourself an 85. So let's see how okay. I would score you. Original first? Original first. Take one of these. Seriously? Yes. I have to have a metal piece? Yes, I, I will too. It's so good. Wow. You eat almond butter. Totally different animal. Stop. The only thing I can taste in all of them is, is the peanut. peanut butter. I can't taste the peanut butter at all. <laughs> can you? Yeah. <laughs> it's like just brushed on the top, yes. so it like you know adheres. Gossamer thin. Yeah. Chris, you also took your bread farther, the caramelization, and I taste it touch bitter, mm -hmm. which isn't necessarily uh, unpleasant against the maple syrup. The cook on this is yeah. like perfect. Yeah. For taste, you gave yourself an 85. I would give you an 82 Fair. because maple syrup does have such a strong identity yeah. flavor wise. It kind of masks everything else that's going on. It's just taking away from any peanut butter that is actually in there, if there's any in there. Not bad, it's just not this. Yeah, totally. Often the simpler ones are more difficult they to are. really nail because there's nowhere to hide. Nope. But you did a great job. You gave yourself an 83 total, and my score for you is actually an 85. What? I know, I can't believe is that. Is that the right math? <laughs> like, I was ready to take the loss, honestly, this morning. Great job, Chris. You actually managed to come out on top. Nice. So thank you. Yeah. I know it takes a certain kind of person to like look back at today and be like, I think that actually went pretty well. <laughs> These ingredients were simple. The dish was pretty simple. The details mattered. Every component matters that much more the fewer ingredients there are. So the chips were stacked against me on this one. For anybody out there who really doesn't like peanut butter, especially in sweet applications, I hear you, I see you, I feel you. You're not alone. I can't stand it when it goes sweet, and I find most peanut butters like really lean on sweetness. I don't love peanut in like sort of like that creamy peanut butter form. I just find it, it's like a very cloying, very oppressive kind of flavor. It just gets in there, it coats everything.